Hi folks, in this video we're looking at some of the best games from Proc Jam 2020, a jam for PCG generated games and other applications. Uh, because this ran at the same time as the 7 day FPS jam, uh, many games were random first person shooters that were entered into both jams, so check out my other video covering that. This is Anything Gallery. This is a museum that shapes itself around whatever search term you put in here. So let's just put in Starbound. It's a very cool idea. I love this a lot. All the artworks are pulled in from Google Images, basically. So there's, yes, Starbound coming in 2016, apparently. Can't wait for that. And as you go through the gallery, it'll evolve um, with the related search terms. So it'll start out as Starbound and then slowly drift away. So we've moved through to the Human Exhibition. Oh yes, the Human section has... Um, it's starting to drift away a bit from Starbound now. Oh my, oh, oh, okay, there's bodies. There's more bodies. And there's being. Oh, this is getting very metaphysical now. Uh, let's hope there's no tits. <laughs> oh, oh no, that's, uh, that's, um, that's certainly something. It's suddenly becoming a lot more like an art place. Oh no, it's becoming, it's becoming the Tate Modern now. Doing being. I, was, I, thought, I thought it was dong and bong at first, but apparently I'm not philosophical enough. So if you're enjoying this video, do drop a like. <laughs> Void exhibition. Ooh. Oh god. New dark energy data emergence from some misshapen, distorted ancient voids. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, it's becoming a horror film. All right, next, let's give Carol Klein a whirl, presenter of Gardener's World. How are you doing? Ah, oh, this is lovely. Okay, I'm going to put in the name of Nico Greetham, uh, apparently Power Ranger and star of the new Netflix film The Pr uh Oh. <laughs> Might be a bit saucier, this one. Apparently he's a bit thirsty. Oh yeah, okay. Um, so yes, I can't stress enough, the results of this are totally unfiltered. This is Aeronaut, a game where you deliver mail to a bunch of procedurally generated islands. Here's the world map, and we have to go and visit the question marks if we want to find some land, and hopefully some houses that will accept mail. I will go back to the starting island because there are quite a few places here, and we drop mail like this! And the closer we get to the house, the more cash we actually make. So we want to see green, um, smiley faces rather than those yellow ones which only give us ten quid. If you do really badly, you get a red face and they're not happy at all. But never mind. Oh, that was a red face. Got Only got five quid for that. But now I've already made quite a bit of cash. 125 quid. So let's go further afield. My current fuel situation is 82 out of 100. And it's going to keep, keep on ticking down. And the only way to recharge that is to find another landing strip. Or go back to the same one. So yeah, we are heading south across open water at the moment. Nothing to find here. Now, you can go up and down quite a bit, uh, but you don't really need to do that that much. Just to avoid, you just need to avoid the land. And also, it's easier to aim at the houses if you're quite low down. Oh, here we go. Oh, I found another landing strip. Perfect. Right. Okay. We've got five houses to deliver to. So turn round, drop, drop. Oh, completely missed there. I think I need to actually get a bit lower. It's confusing me. That's yeah, more like it. Oh. It's not more like it, I'm missing like Billio. Uh, right, so technically we've got one more place to find, there we go. Terrible. Right, I'm going to attempt a landing. Wish me luck, boys. <laughs> this could go spectacularly wrong. Hang on, let's get a bit... Yeah. It's tricky, this. It's surprisingly tricky. Ooh! No, overshot. <laughs> it's a bit like Tornado... Oh, no! Tornado low level, or bloody old... Or Cyclone, actually, I think that's probably a bit more closer. Okay. <laughs> a bit lower. This is, this is hard with steaming, lads. If you go into the barn... In fact, I'm going to aim directly at the barn. There we go. Um, you can actually buy new um, aircraft colours and stuff. So I've got, well, I've got quite a lot of cash, 170 quid. I can buy an entire new body, but that'll cost quite a lot of cash. Um, let's go for... Let's redesign our thing like that. Um, and also, let's go for a blue one. So... We now have full fuel and full mail, and we are now in a, um, a natty shade of blue. Uh, now we need to find more islands, and so the game continues. This is Flowers for Time, a gardening dungeon crawler roguelike. <laughs> Which is a bizarre concept. Uh, let's just quickly equip my shovel, and because we will need to do some gardening quite soon. Let's go down, in fact let's collect our stuff. Let's get some sage, some thyme, some hydrangea, and stuff. We also need to make sure that our water barrel is filled up, or our watering can. And let's go to level one of the dungeon. Right, all randomly generated, of course. And we've got to be careful. Uh oh, a lad. Right. Um, again, it's just like a move into it to attack, but I'm out of rhythm with it at the moment. So there we go. Now I'm in rhythm of it, and I can tonk it. Excellent stuff. Oh, God, there are a load of lads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to garden like that to make sure that he comes next to me. Kill. 
right, left, kill, uh, dig the soil, continue to dig the soil. What I need to do is find out exactly what I need to grow to get to the next level. So I need to have a bit of a look around. Opening doors. Aha, here we go. So we get the green thing and it tells us we need to grow one time on this level. Uh, I think we've got plenty of everything at the moment, so I'm going to quickly dig this up. And then I need to equip some thyme. And then plant that there. And then we need to water it by touching it again. There we go. And that's basically it. I'm going to refill my water. Now for this level, we, our requirements are met, and we just need to find the exit now. Where's the exit? Oh, it must, must be down here, surely. Or maybe in the top. Oh, there we go. There's the exit. Uh, you can't go down if you haven't actually planted everything that you need to plant. That is, I think, time that I've still got equipped. Now I need to change to my sage. Put that down there. Oh, we need more water, I think. There we go. Now everything's watered. And I think we're good to go. Oh, bad end, consumed by disease. So I'm not 100% sure why I died there. I think this is more further investigation. Um, it seems so simple at first, and it is fairly simple, but it does seem that there are a few things to find underneath the soil. This is Auto Miner, and, you're, and yes, you'll definitely know whether you um, like or hate this within the first few seconds. It's about deploying robots to do the mining for you, and also to collect your gems for you as well. So I'm going to put myself down a drill bot, and he's going to do whatever the hell he wants to do. He's going to dig um, out caves, and I'm going to follow him and pick up gems, get more money, and buy more robots, and also some more upgrades. Looks like he's already found a way through to this place. Quite a lot of cash here. Each one of these is worth three monies, which is actually quite good. Uh, I think they can be worth various different amounts. It's like yellow, red, uh, and more. So many different colours. So I've already got 30 quid. I might be able to upgrade my existing robot. But at the moment, I think of what I want to do, preferably. Oh dear, what, don't, go, don't go back that way. And what I really want to do is get another robot rather than, yeah, just upgrade my existing one. Oh, here we go. He's busy doing that. Ah, I'm going to get busy buying a new lad. Oh, apparently my uh, my first robot has um, um explored five caves now, so that's, uh, that's new items have appeared in the shop. I still need to actually deploy my second robot. I haven't actually got around to doing that yet. There we go. So there's number two. So he's going to get busy doing that. I think a, a gem collecting robot should be our next goal. Oh, oh. He's dug a cave to nowhere. You farce. You farce. Right, accelerate past him. Yes. Oh, achievement unlocked. Actually, let's have a look now, then. So, look at the mod... We've got loads of modules. Look at this. Have we got enough cash yet for a, a gatherer? No, we don't. Right, I'm going to leave you. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, a bit... Oh, wow. A cave of wonders. Green one is worth ten. Holy shit. Okay, well... Time for a bit of shopping, then. Gem gatherer. Right. You look identical. <laughs> but I'm sure you'll find some gems at some point. Now that means the money's going to automatically roll in now. Oh, meanwhile, I'm going to grab these myself. So I bought a tracer for... I think this is my fifth robot. Ooh. Interesting. So now we know where he's been or where he's going. Cool. It certainly helps on the map, anyway. And drive turbo. Well, apparently I've just bought one. So, I'll put this into my robot as well. He's got miles. Come back. Drive turbo. There we go. I should... Sp I think that makes you go... You know, drive around the place faster. Oh, yes, yeah, there you go. Bloody hell, you're... You're going out the clappers. So, yes, it's not the prettiest game, or the whatever, but um, it's it feels just d definitely feels like a very early prototype of something I'd really, really actually want to spend a lot of time playing. This is Quasar Kid, a game set on with CG-generated worlds, um, of which there are many, many, many. So I am pooing out my rainbow stuff and hitting the glowing lads, and I will befriend them. I need to get them down to a certain number. There we go. They've turned green, and they've gone into my ship. If you go into the ship... Let's just press that. Um, you see, I've already collected quite a few lads from previous goes. Um, each one of these is actually adding to my stats at the bottom left. So top left, the, um, a blue one, which is a good one. Um, they're adding radius of plus 1.3, power of almost 1, and damage of a, a little sliver. And the other ones are adding lesser amounts. And so the more people you find and put in your spaceship, the better things get. And you can also release lads that you don't really want because they're a bit rubbish. So let's not do that. Let's go exploring. Oh, God. Uh, the minimap at the top will tell you exactly where bad lads are. This is actually quite a tough one, but it's, it's going to be worth it because this is a blue one. So join me, get in the ship, and let's see what you are. You add quite a bit of radius. Uh, I'm not sure that's a good thing or not. 
right now. So we've got two more lads by the looks of it on this planet. Um, I'm going up to one up left. Um, this this rainbow jet that I've got um, does run out. Um, top right is the number there, but um, because I've got I've been upgraded so so much, I might as well just collect some more from over there. Because I've been upgraded so much, um, it means I've got a, a much bigger tank at my disposal. There. Okay, that's everyone on this planet. Uh, it's not. It's a bit of an emptier planet, this one. There's not that many mountains and things. Uh, we've got to often destroy mountains, otherwise they will get trapped, because they're not too bright, these lads. Um, okay, get into my ship. Let's go to a new planet instead, which will look very similar. Already there is a, is a lad there. Oh my god, he's a bit tougher. And so, yeah, there are different kinds of aliens, and they will have different behaviours. He's only a green one as well. Ooh. He's re not too tough, this one. This one... This one's... A f oh, this one's really tough. The, I don't know why I'm killing him, because I've already got him. Alright. So think of this as like a Pokemon type thing, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> oh, you're a pinkun! Ooh, I don't think I've had a pink one before. So to speak. Let's put you in my ship. Get rid of you. Get in. And you give me stats. Huge stats! My radius is massive now. So wonderfully charming game this. There's another one where I want to see it developed into something bigger. This is Rambling Man. This is a procedural, story-based, first-person shooter, as it turns out. And here is a big train. Choo-choo! Enemies killed your friend. Go to the research table and craft some weapons to save your life. Right, let's go through here. Ooh, stuff. Food. Do I need food? No, I don't. I think I might need to go in the other direction. Through here. Through here. Research table. So I've got eight, XP 60, so I can research... Ooh, it's got to be the handgun, hasn't it? Let's go and shoot some things. If I can just get through things. Oh, oh, careful. Actually, what happens if you do this? So on the bottom left you can see um, food and water is going down. So I've got to make sure that I do drink every so often. Uh-oh, here we go. I don't think I can shoot him just yet. Maybe after, maybe here. Maybe this way. Oh. Get him, get him! Damn it. I had to reload. Oh, okay. Can I actually get out? I don't have to get very far out, can I? Oh, shit! Something. Ah, ah. Right, find him, get him, get him, get him, get him. No, he's, he's gone. He's, he's out of range. Okay, there's loads of lads coming in on the right. Shit! Okay. These bloody doors. Oh, got him! You can shoot through this window. Excellent stuff. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure, to be honest. Right, okay, so my health is down to 76. Oh, slight. I'm bumping the road there. Okay, food. And water. That's not so bad. Apparently you get five points for a headshot, um, and two points for just a body shot, so... Thankfully they have got great big heads. Are we also, also changing biome at the moment? Have I got enough XP for a new gun? No, I don't. I, oh, bloody hell, I didn't see him. Too far away, too far away. He has to turn red. There we go. Ah, got him! My health is down to 45. I've really got to be careful here. Got you. Reload. Oh, I'm out of ammo. Bollocks. Oh, I'm being shot up. Ow, ow, bloody hell. There's too many of them. I couldn't get the ammo. <laughs> I've been fumfering. I've got eight. Okay, here's what I'll do. Melee attack. Ha! So this is four giga boss fights. This is a bullet hell against procedure generated bosses. Again, Pico 8, and I've just been topped. Ugh. Never mind about that. So my bar in the bottom right will actually give me a super weapon, which that recharges slowly over time. I actually need to mo start moving. I need to actually aim the damn things, but... Oh, it's quite tricky. Go! Okay. Oh! I managed to get in... Oh, bloody hell! Managed to get in a few good shots there. I need to actually move over here, I think. Um, it's, it's an auto-fire, this. There we go. Kill boss number six, that was. And now boss number seven. Fut Yahalu! Or something. You can see, um, um, once you actually get past the few, the first few bosses, they start to, um, the bosses start to get quite weird and stuff. And you can actually see how the procedural generation works. Oh, there we go. That one quite straight forward. Boss number eight. Right, let's go for it. Ha! If you actually really drive your meter up in the bottom right, um, you can really decimate them in seconds. It's most satisfying. Right, let's get rid of that bit, that limb. And absolute tonk him. Yes. Okay, that's it. If you want to see more Game Jam content, check out my 7-day FPS Jam video. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then please consider supporting me on Buy Me A Coffee using the link in the description. Or just leave a like, like that artwork in the museum told you to, yeah? 
See you next time.